it is interesting to note that the smooth, clear, virtually distortion-free fluid glass is actually manufactured from some of the coarsest ingredients, the most abundant of them being the sand, sodium carbonate, limestone, along with dolomite, salt cakes and carbon is added last but not the least and also an interesting ingredient is the colour or in other words recycled crushed glass. Once the raw materials arrive from the storage area, they are moved to the silos. They are then drawn from the silos in appropriate proportions for weighing and mixing through the use of hoppers, chutes and dust collectors. The mix thus formed is termed as a batch and it is delivered to the melting furnace by belt conveyors. The mixed batch from batch house is fed into furnace storage bin. Furthermore, the furnace is also lined with temperature sensors to monitor the heat generated within. A batch charger controls the amount of batch fed into the furnace. Natural gas burners are used to heat up the furnace to the melting temperature of 1600 degrees Celsius. The solid particles in the batch melts and transforms into a molten viscous liquid as it flows through the mouth, through the melter area of the furnace, into the refiner. The molten glass is stirred into a homogenized mixture by the stirrers. A computerized process control system is enforced in the melting furnace. The furnace as a whole is insulated with special airflow features which enables the furnace to operate at maximum fuel efficiency, thereby minimizing the emission of air polluting gases. Its delicate design helps to meet specific gross daily production demands of the plant. The next step in the glass manufacturing process is ribbon formation that takes place in tin bath. From the melting furnace, the liquid glass is fed into tin bath, also known as the flowed bath, pre-filled with molten tin. The molten glass doesn't mix with the molten tin, but instead forms a separate layer on the top of the tin and floats over it. Just like oil when poured on water, it is during this step where the glass takes its shape and cools down, thus solidifying into a smooth, distortion-free, fine glass sheet. The width and thickness of the glass sheet or ribbon thus formed are defined by an operator in the control room. The next step after ribbon formation is annealing of glass that takes place in the annealing layer. The primary function of an annealing layer furnace is to gradually cool the glass coming from the float furnace. Using the renowned Isra Vision German technology, the freshly manufactured float glass is inspected for any and all types of body and surface defects. Glass that fails to meet the quality standards are identified and recycled as cullet. The last steps that complete the manufacturing cycle include cutting, packing, storage and shipping. The cooled glass ribbon is brought to the cutting area by a mechanical roll drive system. A glass rim and scoring system is applied to monitor the scoring and cutting of the glass by the use of carbide cutting wheels placed in a X and Y or parallel and perpendicular system. The plant's cutting system is capable of automatically cutting and scoring glass as per dimensions specified by the company's clients. An integral task delegated to the cutting system is to collect the edges of the cut glass along with the rejected glass from the laser shorter step, if any at all, and send them to colored storage yard for later reuse. The glass ribbons are separated into leads for packaging ease on the packing table, after which an auto stacker automatically stacks and transfers them to the warehouse for later shipment. 